Mr. President, uh, the Senator from Georgia. First of all, let me um, let me thank my colleague from Oklahoma for just highlighting this issue of reaching a point where the American people have wanted us to be for some time, and that is to simply look at the spending that is going on in Washington and say enough is enough, and that if we're going to, going to continue down the road of increasing federal spending, then we have got to offset that additional fe federal spending that is over and above the amount of revenues coming in by federal spending that is in place today. I also want to say to my, uh, my friend from Michigan, the chairman of the Armed Services Committee, who made the request on the uh, approval of the promotion of, of a general, that as he knows, I have already voted in favor of doing that one time within the committee. I regret that we're having to stand up and object, but as he well knows, that's uh, part of the process here uh, that Senator Coburn had to object on behalf of another member of the Senate. Mr. President, I, I, I can't help but um, note that as we're talking about spending here, an article that appeared in this morning's Washington Times, and the caption in the article is CBO report, debt will rise to 90 percent of GDP. And the article reads, President Obama's fiscal 2011 budget will generate nearly $10 trillion in cumulative budget deficits over the next 10 years, $1.2 trillion more than the administration projected, and raise the federal debt to 90 percent of the nation's economic output by 2020, according to the Congressional Budget Office. In its 2011 budget, which the White House Office of Management and Budget released February 1, the administration projected a 10-year deficit total of $8.53 trillion. After looking it over, CBO said in its final analysis, released Thursday, that the President's budget would generate a combined $9.75 trillion in deficits over the next decade. Mr. President, this is exactly why, with the leadership of the Senator from Oklahoma, that we have got to address this issue of spending and why we have got to get this issue of spending under control. And no time is better suited to do this than now. I mean, we're looking at a deficit, according to the Independent Office of Congressional Budget Office, of um, $10 trillion over 10 years. And here, the majority is saying we can't find $9 billion to offset this particular bill that everybody agrees is needed, that everybody on both sides of the aisle would like to see enacted, but very simply stated, the minority, the Republicans, just want to see the bill paid for. And if we can't find $9 billion in federal spending that's out there today to offset this bill, how in the world are we going to be able to do anything other than, under the current leadership, go down this road of seeing nearly $10 trillion in budget deficits accumulate over the next 10 years? Um, we're, um, uh, Congress has an obligation to serve as custodians of the American taxpayer dollar. And when we engage in unchecked deficit spending, it has a long-lasting negative impact on all Americans. I understand times are tough across the country. As I said earlier, in my home state of Georgia, the unemployment rate um, announced last month was 10.4 percent. There's a new number coming out today. I suspect it's going to be at least that high. Georgians are hurting, and I'm concerned about that. And that's why I would like to make sure that we can extend this unemployment insurance. But to do so without paying for it, in my opinion, is reckless at this point in time. And it would not be in the best interest of all Americans to extend it without paying for it. And the fact is, uh, again, as I said earlier, I voted to extend it without paying for it back in the early part of March. And the reason I did was because it was with the understanding that the majority had 30 days to work with the minority to try to find the offsets. And when did the discussions on what those offsets would be begin? They began last night, about two hours before we finally decided it was time to go home. 
And to the credit of, of uh, the presiding officer, as well as others on the majority side in a leadership role, they agreed with the Republican Party, uh, the Republican members of this Senate, that we should offset it and we could offset it. And that was objected to by Speaker Pelosi, and unfortunately, here we are today in a situation where we're arguing about $9 billion versus looking at a proposed deficit from this administration of $10 trillion over the next 10 years. The American people are just as upset as they can be with Congress, and rightfully so. And the main reason they're upset with us is, is because of this very issue. When I'm back home, which I do, which is where I go every weekend, and I visit with folks, whether it's in the grocery store, whether it's at church, or within the business community, every constituent at some point in the conversation about what's happening in Washington will bring up the issue of federal spending and why in the world you members of Congress don't take some action to get this spending under control. There's never been a better time to do it than with this particular bill, and there's never been an easier time to do it. We're not talking about a trillion dollars. We're talking about nine billion dollars in offsets, in reductions in federal spending, in waste, fraud, and abuse that we all know is out there, or whatever area we can agree on that the money would come from. And as we know, we've already identified some areas that we can reduce federal spending to pay this. Now is the time to do it, and I would simply say to, to my uh, colleague from Oklahoma, I commend him for being firm. I commend him for being uh, in a leadership role on this issue, and I'm very pleased to stand with him to, to say that uh, now is the time to do it, and I think we should find that $9 billion. Well, I thank the Senator from Georgia. I don't